It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington.
Hello, everybody. I, I wish I could say it's so good to see you again. I wish I could see you, but it's so good to come your way again with, with this broadcast, whether it's through the, the radio or YouTube, whatever. And uh, so good for us to share some time together with God's Spirit and, and His Word. I, I pray that the, the messages have, have been a blessing to you. I, they come from the Word of God. They come from God, His, His own Word. And I pray they've been a blessing to you and that God has opened your, your eyes and your understanding to some things concerning life and concerning him and the way we should really serve him and love God above all, love him above all. And most definitely, you know, not just be in love with, with, the, with, the, with the religion, but in love with almighty God and having received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So very important. Every day we live, you know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that to all the living, there is hope. See, once we leave this, this, this life, once we leave this world, how, how, whatever we, we, we do, when we lie down, everything's forgotten. We don't have any more memory, no nothing. Everything that, that we, we should have done is, is left here. Everything that we, we left undone is left here. If you let somebody get out of here without making things right with them, okay, if they leave here, it's too late. So the Bible tells us, though, to all the living, there is hope. There's, that's a chance for a better day. But we must learn to, to turn away, to repent, to turn from our own way to turn from our own ways to the ways of God, to, to, to accept him, to trust him, to trust God enough to obey him. The, the prophet Jeremiah, this, this is, well, well, we'll read it. I, I, I hate to say it's not the message, but we're, we're going to read it in Jer Lamentations, the, the third chapter. This man went through a whole lot. He was displaced, uprooted. He, he, he was a a, a, a statesman. He loved his country. He was a prophet of the Lord, and and he 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 just he lamented. He he cried out. He sorrowed over the destruction of Jerusalem, the the, the way the the people were treated, the way they were taken in bondage. He was the one that had to to bring the word of, of in, in, in enslavement to the people. He he had the, the the word of being captured and taken over by the Babylonians. He, and, and that hurt him. That that bothered him. Uh, his own family turned on him. Members of his own family turned on Jeremiah. And, and he, he really went through it. He, he went through it, but he still had this to say in the middle of all the things that he, he went through in the book of Lamentations, right after the, the book of Jeremiah, the third chapter, it, it says here, and let's start here with, with, with about... Eh, Okay, I, well, I'll just read some of it. Start with the 16th verse. It's with 17th verse. Thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. He, 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 was, he, was, <laughs> he was very unhappy. He, he wished for death on, on occasion. I forgot prosperity. And I said my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction, though, and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul had them still in remembrance. I still remember, he remembered some of the things that he went through, but God brought him through. He, he understood that. But the, the bitterness of it, some of the hurt lingered on from some of the things that he suffered. And said, my, they, they're still in remembrance in my soul and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind. I remember what God has done for me. I, re I remember the things he's kept us through. Therefore, have I hope. And then he went on to say, in the middle of all that just misery and pain and, and sorrowfulness, he said, it is of the Lord's mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. God has kept us. God has kept us, and it's because of his mercy that we've not been consumed, because, of his, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. Not just I have a portion of this and that, but the Lord 
is my portion. God is all I hope for. Everything about him is, is my portion. It's, 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 it's God who fills my soul with gladness and, and goodness. It's God who fills my soul with hope. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Listen to this. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope in the middle of total despair. This, this man is, is, is looking to the goodness of God. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly, that means without complaint, wait for the salvation of the Lord. Because his, his, his compassion, God's faithfulness, it is every day you wake up. You're, you're experiencing the, the blessing of God. You, 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 you make, you're aware of it. You should be aware. And that's why we should wake up in the mornings praising God. And, if, and, and nobody, nobody's done it all right. But hallelujah, you got a chance to make it right. Every day we live is a chance to, to be better by the grace of God. Every day we live is a chance to do better to do better, to be better. Every day we live is a, is a chance. We have a chance to, to repent. If, if, if we've been going the, the wrong route, doing the, the wrong thing, whatever, whatever it is, we have a chance to turn from that and to turn to the way of God, to turn to the will of God. And that's my hope today, that, that God will bless, that God will touch someone today, touch hearts and, and turn their hearts to him. So we're going we're gonna to get on into the Word of God. And uh, to, to get started, I, I have to read a few, just a few scriptures to get started in this, in this message today. And we're going to talk about a couple of things that are, that are very important. You know, Jesus, he spoke about giving alms. You know, your, 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 your duties, like giving to the poor, help, helping those who are displaced or whatever, those who are less fortunate to give, and people call it charity or whatever, you know, but, but to, to give from your heart, to give. And he said also, too, that the poor you're going to have with you always. So wh why do we, why are some people successful, some aren't? Those who are successful should know that it is their God-given duty to assist and to help those who are less fortunate. That, 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 it's, it, we're supposed to. We're supposed to. To, to let Christ, to let the hand of God, uh, uh, let, our, uh, let proof of our ministry be made seen by, by doing God's will and allowing God to use us as his hand of, of mercy, as his hand of generosity to, to give and to help others. So we're going to go here to the book of St. Luke very quickly. And this is going to sort of set up for a couple of other things, something, something else is very important. But we have to get this, and I hope that, that you have your Bible and you're following with us in the Word of God to show you what, what, what God says about giving, about blessing, about helping. Not, not just, see, people will give sometimes to their ministries, which is good. You're supposed to. You're supposed to. People will pay tithes. You're supposed to. You know, you're supposed to. But, but what about just, just giving, giving from what's yours, from what's yours, to help someone else, to give to help the poor, to alleviate the pain and suffering of somebody in this world. So we're going to look at something very quickly. St. Luke, let's go here, the sixth chapter. Okay. And let's start with about the, the 30th verse. Praise God. And I do hope today that you take your Bibles and, and go with us right in the Word of God. St. Luke, the sixth chapter. And let's start here. Let's take a look at it. At the 30th verse, I'm going to read through this. We're going to read through, through some of this to, to, to get to, to a point. We, we, we're, going to, we're going to work it up. All of it is good. All of it is valid. All of it is relevant. It all comes from the word of God. And it's going to take us somewhere. It's going to show us something. So the book tells us here in the words of Jesus, he said, he taught this, Jesus taught this, give to every man that asks of thee. Now you have to understand the word of God. What is he saying? 
people who ask who definitely have a need how can you give if if you give to everybody if, if you're out in the open and everybody who asks you something you would never have anything to give because your your resources would be depleted people who honestly need help and they ask for you out out of an honest and good heart they're, they're being honest they're, they're, they're truthful they need help they're not con artists they're, they're wanting you they're, they're looking to you for for relief to show some compassion on them well he says give to, to every man that asks of thee and of him that takes away thy goods, ask them not again. And as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Now, if you would that men hate you, will you hate others? You know, if you if you would that, that men uh, con you or mistreat you or rob and steal from you, well, okay, that, that's what he's saying. The way you want to be treated is the way you treat other people, okay? That, that's what you do. People call it the golden rule. I mean, it's... The, the, Enough said, okay? Now, for if you love them, if you only love them that which love you, what think of you? What, what good are you doing? What are you doing in, in a better, any more than anybody else? For sinners also love them that love them, you know? People, sin, sinners do, so you, you're doing no more than a sinner. If you only love people who love you or give to people who can give to you, you're not doing any more than infidels or people who don't even know Jesus, okay? So he, he's wanting us to, to go beyond th th this mark of, of, of just, just mere flesh and humanism, okay? So he tells us here, and if you do good to them which do good to you, what think of you? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? What good are you doing? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. People lend, lend to, to profit, lend to, to charge interest. And by the way, the, 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 the Hebrews were, were forbidden from charging interest on their money when they, if they lent it to a, a fellow countryman or, or whatever. And the church, the, the, the saints of God, shouldn't. If, if you lend, you don't charge interest. You don't want to capitalize off, just off somebody else's Need okay? You go. You take that outside the church. You you that you open a business for profit. That's why people go into business for profit. Okay, that's to, to earn. So so th that that settles that. Now, so he tells us, but love your enemies. Listen, love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Now that is a powerful powerful statement hoping for nothing again now this doesn't mean that somebody who hates your guts hate they hate to know that you're still breathing man they despise you curse you every chance they get it's not people who have, who have they turned and they've been humbled some way or another and they have the good good god sense enough to repent from that evil. They have been your enemy, but they, they ask you, they, they, they need you. They, they need some compassion. They need help. When they come to you for help, you don't turn them away. You do not, because, okay, I've got you in a bad spot now, and I'm glad to see you there, and I'm going to keep you there. That's not the way, that's not the way God wants us to do it. It's, as a matter of fact, one of the wisest men we ever lived, Solomon, the wisest uh, that, that we know of, besides Jesus, he, uh, he, he wrote in, in Proverbs, that, that we, don't, we don't even rejoice. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls. Don't, even, don't be glad if they stumble in life or, or run across a bad situation. Don't, don't be happy about it at all. Don't rejoice. Oh, look at them. I'm so glad. No, no, no. Love your enemies enough. That means to care en enough about that human soul. When they fall into despair, pain, suffering, or whatever, that you, you can at least pray for them. Pray for them. Pray that God will turn their hearts to him wholeheartedly. And if, and if they have turned and they've been humbled enough to come to you and say, look, I'm so sorry for the way I've been, and I apologize, and, and to do in sincerity now, sincerity, and they offer apology and ask for your help, you don't turn that person away. And it says to, to lend, hoping for nothing in return. You know, well, how can you lend and hope for nothing in return? 
No, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that just here just just a second. Lend if you lend, that means that you you you're placing something in somebody's hand for a certain time, and you expect it back. The thing is, even if they are unable, if something and they are truthfully unable to pay it back, you don't hound that person about it. Let them alone. Let let, let it go. Lend hoping for nothing in return. You don't have something you can hold over their heads. Why? And I have to have to tell you right about this. Uh, uh, let's see. Hoping for nothing in return. Hold your finger right here for a minute. We're going to turn over to Proverbs very quickly. Let, let me let me mark this right here in St. Luke. We're going to come right back to St. Luke, but let's go to Proverbs the 19th chapter. Okay, Proverbs the 19th chapter. And let's see what we have. Okay, lend hoping for nothing in, in return. All right, so this, this is part of the reason. We're going to cover this a little bit more here in just a few minutes. Proverbs 19. Okay. Praise God. All right, this, this is good. All this is good. The Word of God is just good, and it's true by itself. It's just true by itself. We'll, we'll come back to this. But let's, let's read this, this, this one verse. Proverbs 19 and 17. And the, the book tells us that he that has pity upon the poor, when you pity the poor, people who are in need or whatever, and, and, and you, you give to them, that means to have pity doesn't mean that you say, oh, I feel so sorry for them, and you keep walking. No, that means you have compassion. Compassion involves Action, yeah, you, you, you have, they have your sympathy, they, they have your empathy, man. You, you, you feel them, and you feel their pain, their hurt, and you want to help them, so you are moved to do something. So the Bible says, he that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. So even if that person is not able to give back, or you, and you don't expect back from them, you give to them, you place it in their hands, and not uh, looking for, for God every day, you you're calling on, Lord, I'm praying, Where, where's, my, where, where's my money back? Or where's my blessing? No, it's, it's not like that. But, but God notes that. God notes that. He, he pays very, very, very astute attention to that. And it says that you lend to the Lord and he will. Listen, they lend to the Lord and that which he has given him, he will pay him again. God will do it. That's God's stuff. That's God's business. And it's, it's so much. Praise God. Well, I have to, while we're in Proverbs, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's go right over Proverbs, the 21st chapter. And we're going we're gonna to get back here in a minute. Proverbs 21, and let's see here. All right. All right, since, yeah. And 13. This, this is very, very important. Praise God. All right. Proverbs 21, 13. All right. The book tells us this. Whoso, no matter who the person is, whoso stops. Now, I know. Well, that's another, another, another message. That people are doing that today in, in, in high, high places. But whoso stops his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but he shall not be heard. So you don't, you don't want to ignore the poor, and nor do you want to give to them or, or to help them just so, well, I don't want God to, be, to, to, to turn on me. You, you don't do it just for that, just to get something. You're not playing games with God. You're doing it from your heart because you love God, you, you love mankind, and, and you, want to, you want to be an arm of, of help and, and comfort and blessing to others. So it says back in, in St. Luke now, it says, but love your enemies and do good, 35th verse, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you'll be called the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful. Look at this. Praise God. God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. To all the living, there's a chance, and maybe, just maybe, but by, by your, I'm not saying that you're going to call somebody to get, so you can. 
you know, people must be, be led by God's spirit to Christ, to Jesus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Salvation is all about God's business. That's the Lord. That's, that's his stuff. But you can be an instrumental part in it. Allow God to use you. And maybe by that person seeing the love of God displayed in your life, as the Bible says, that we should do good and men to see our good works and glorify God, which is in heaven. They'll praise God. And, and, and thank him, and, and, and maybe it'll be God's will to in, invite them. It's already predestined to invite them into the family. So, but it, it says this, he is, he's kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your father which is in heaven is also merciful. All right? So judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not. People, people definitely stop. You know what judging is? making a jackass out of yourself, to tell you the truth, because people assume a lot of stuff, you know? And some people will, will assume, not even know the truth about a matter, will assume in, in, the, in their own little little tiny minds, they'll make a lie true, you know, and to them, because they think, you know? That's why they're tired of people talking about what they think about God's word. Now, what does God say about it? That's, 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 that's what we should, we should, should live by and, and go by. So it says, he says this, judge not, and you shall not be judged. So in other words, if you do judge, you're going to fall into judgment one day. You're going to be judged by others and, and, and condemned by them. And then it says, condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. You know why, so, why people today live with, they can't be happy for nothing. No matter what, they just can't be happy. And every time uh, so, some drama is going on, or some confusions turned up. Their name always pops up, and you know why? Because it, they're miserable, unforgiving people, and they still think, no matter what, what Jesus said about for, forgiveness, they think they're tight with God. They, they think they're special, so special with the Lord that they don't have to forgive, that they can be mean, they can be cruel, they, they can talk about us, they can backbite people. People think that, they, they believe that. But folk will be surprised one day. People are going to be surprised to find out, to find out that they really weren't that special at all. But to all the living, there's hope. I hope today is, is, is your day uh, to, to repair. I mean, it's my day to, to, to make some changes, to, to make some decisions. You can't, you can't make change without decision anyway. There's got to be a, a, a concrete decision in your mind, your, your, in, in, your, in your heart of hearts, to, about some, some things that you're going to change and do different, think different about. But people need to learn to forgive. Forgive. Listen. And say, if you forgive, you'll be forgiven. So in other words, if you don't, if you don't, Jesus said that too, if you don't forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So he goes on to say, and to talk about giving. We're going to just, just get through this today. And, and he says, give. Give, that means to release from your hands. And, and giving is, is, is not always just, well, I've got extra. No, something, giving at times is a sacrifice. It's, it's something that you do to, to your inconvenience. And you can give more. Yeah, give, give money, give, give finance. Give, but you can give of yourself. You can give, uh, give comfort. You can give your time. You can give up of your resources. You can give up your skills. You can give so many ways to help other people. You can give kind words and words of wisdom and encouragement to others. But give, the Bible says, give, said Jesus, give, freely give, and it shall be given unto you. Now, I believe that. Some people don't. That's why they're so stingy. That's why so many tightwads run around here. So tight. I don't, I don't know if many of you remember Jack Benny, but supposedly he was one of the, the, the stingiest people. <laughs> it, they make, it might have just been his, his, uh, his, his, his ad, you know, the way he was since he was a comedian, you know. But uh, some people are so tight. You ever heard people say some folks are so tight they'll squeeze a nickel and make the buffalo, buffalo cry. But it says here, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, good measure. Uh, that means a lot. You, you, God will bring it back to you through the hearts and minds and actions of other people. Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, all kinds of blessings, shaken up together, and running over, that more than enough, 
shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. If you give stingily, life's going to treat you like that. That's what you're going to receive in life. If you are a, a stingy, that's, that's what, what Jesus in St. Matthew, around 5th, 6th chapter, somewhere around in there, talked about having an evil eye. That means a person who's stingy, who's stingy. They, they just, boy, they, they, they're going to watch. Not that's somebody who's, who's attentive to their affairs and business and, and, and watch, taking care of their money, but somebody who's just stingy. They're too stingy to live, too stingy to, to live themselves, let alone help somebody else. Hallelujah. But if you want to, to, to live and, and be prosperous, give. That's, that's a part of it. Jesus gave all. God gave his son. His son gave his life. And, and that's what he calls us for. He calls us to be ambassadors of Christ as lovers, faithers, givers. Here on planet Earth, we're going to represent God. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep moving. So I want you to get this. I want you to understand that God wants us to, to help, and, and all these things, the, it, and take sacrifice at times, but the, the reward, not just, and we don't do it for the, not just for reward, God will though, he'll reward you. If you sow, to, if, if, you, if you sow a, a, a harvest, a sow a, you, you, no harvest without sowing, right? So if you sow a harvest of, of corn, you, you sow in a field, you're gonna get corn. Without, without your sowing that harvest, you get nothing. So everything has its reward. You expect that harvest to come up once you're on the field. So you can expect it in life from God. If you do things God's way with the right heart now, with the right heart, with the, with the right attitude, with, through the love of God, with the right mindset in Christ, do it God's way because you love him. And, and, and you want to be a, 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 a witness, a living participant where your life, not through some pride or arrogance or anything, where your life would not just show. I'm not talking about uh, showing that you're so blessed and you got this and you have this. And you, I'm not talking. That's, that's, that's junk. Some people think the Bible says that, think that, that uh, godliness is gain. That, that, and that's not the truth. No, you will gain from godliness. That, that, that's the truth. But because you, you put your greedy, that's, that's just covetous. Because you creep, that's not saying that, but you want your life to show the, the blessing, the blessed attributes of Christ. You want the character of God to be manifest in your life. That, that's, that's what it's all about. So we're going to go here. We're going to turn right over very quickly to, let's see, Isaiah. The 58th chapter, I'm not going to read all this. Most of you have heard most of this time and time and time again. Praise God. Let's see here, Isaiah 58. To show, let's, let's just take a look at it. Giving is a, is a part of this. Blessing God. Giving to the poor. Those who seem to, who, who seem to be down, downtrodden, outcast, whatever. Don't look, whatever you do, don't look down on another human being. You don't know them. You don't know maybe what they've been through, what they're going through. You don't know what got them to that point. Might be something evil. Might be some, 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 uh, some dishonor uh, to God or uh, family, parents, somebody. You, you, don't know. you don't know their story. But don't look down your nose at any human being because you, you, don't, you don't know. There, but for the grace of God, go I. It could be you. It could be me. It could be anybody. Praise God. So let's, let's take a look at this. In the book of Isaiah, quickly. Oh, let's see here. Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Hope you're with me. People had an issue about fasting, and, and, and the, the, the prophet, you know, God did. God, God addressed them about, with the mouth, through the mouth of the prophet about their fasting, that they were fasting for strife and debate debate, trying to show themselves to be more righteous than others or more religious than others. And I'm, you know, some, see, with, with some people, godly acts are just an outward show. But with some people, you, you can tell it's pure. It comes from the heart, man. They, they, they have these good deeds, good things they're doing because they, they love God. They love participating in ministry. They love giving. They, they love being of, of service to humankind. They love it. 
They love, kids love uh, being able to, to take, if, if the parents need help, to take care of them. They love to look at, they, they love it. They, man, they, they enjoy being the, the hand of God. They, they, they love it, not through pride or, or gain or anything, not, not any kind of self-gratification. It's because of the glory of God. They praise God Almighty. They want the light of God to not just shine on them, but shine through their lives. And, and this is the way we, we all should live. This is what God wants from us. This, this is what he wants. So these people were, were, were fasting. You know, you know what fasting is. And it's good. It's good to, to fast, to do without food or, 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 or drink or what, whatever it is, or some pleasures or, or comforts of life. It's, you know, for a, a, a set period of time. It's good. You set the time and, and make, make that promise to God. But once you do, you better keep it. <laughs> you better keep it so you better know what you're doing. Okay? That's not, nothing to play with. But there, there's, a, there's another fast, spiritually uh, acted out in, in our everyday lives. And the prophet says here, we're not going to read all this. In the fifth verse, it says, it starts here, Isaiah 58 and 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul, just to get down in misery, to afflict his soul, and walk around looking sorrowful and sad, and, and to bow, his, bow down his head as a bulrush, as a reed, or, or to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? And you ignore the poor? You, you ignore those of your own household who, who need help. You, you, you ignore that, that person in the street that, that, that sits there. Not, I'm not talking about the hustlers and con artists and people, want to, people who just want to pimp society. I'm not talking about them. I'm people who generally need help. You ignore the outcast. You ignore the homeless. You ignore the, the plight of the poor. You know, but but we sit in our churches. We sit in, in our it, it just just clothed with all our religious selves and character and attitude and all that, while, while ignoring ignoring humanity. God forbid. God forbid. And there are too many avenues of, in, in this day and time. I mean, people have been vetted. Uh, too many avenues to give. Too many ways to help. You yeah, personally and otherwise. Is not this the fast that I've chosen, says God. Listen, is not this the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. To stop acting, yeah, to let those who are entrapped in wickedness, to help set them free. To help loose them, but you loose your own, those things that you're involved in that you know are wicked in the sight of God. They're in re in rebellion, in opposition, in contradiction, living a life that's in contradiction to God's word, he said, loose it. Cut it loose. That's it. L let, let it go. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens. Stop oppressing people. Stop letting your life be a, a, a just deliberately, m making your life a burden to others, but help deliver others who are burdened in life. Jesus, man, it's such, uh, just beautiful, just beautiful in, in St. Matthew, the 11th, the 11th chapter when he said, come unto me. He, he, he sent that invitation out himself. All ye who are labor, you, you're burdened with life, you're laboring in life, and life is a struggle. All you who, who, who labor and are heavy laden, you, 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 you're burdened down, and I'll give you rest, he said. He said that, take my yoke upon you, get hooked up with me. And learn of me, he said, I, and, and, and you'll find rest in your soul. My burden is easy, and my yoke is light. <laughs> my yoke is light, my burden is easy, whatever. But he, he, he offered comfort, and that's what, that's what we're to do as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, as children of the Most High God. This, this is the way we're supposed to live. So he's telling us here, you first of all, loose, loose wickedness yourselves first, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. Hallelujah, Jesus. A lot of, a lot of controversy in the land today about people, namely people of color, who've been oppressed, oppressed systematically, slyly, very cleverly for years and years and years and years. You know, still are free, but this, this, this is part of it. But in our, in, in our, for every believer, 
This is our responsibility too, to make sure that we participate in letting the oppressed go free. And if you have been oppressing someone, let them go free. Undo the heavy burden. Let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. This is the fast of God. This is what pleases God. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? You give food to the hungry and to the poor. Listen, and, and that you bring the poor that are cast out to your house. Hallelujah. That means you give them shelter. Doesn't necessarily mean you got to go out in the street and find Charlie Manson and bring him home. It doesn't mean that, that you bring him home with you and say, well, Charlie, this is your bedroom right here. You have your own private bath. It doesn't mean that. Yeah, it, it, it necessary, if necessary, you, you'll help people, that, but you better know what you're doing before you do that. But it means that you provide shelter. You put somebody up in a, in a, in a hotel or you'll you rent a house or you, you'll enable them you, you, or you'll give to organizations that do. You, you participate with organizations like that's I'll give them a plug, Habitat for Humanity. You, you'll help people. You will help. Listen to this. That you do what? Bring the poor that are cast out to your house and when you see the naked that you cover him. That you help offer shelter and food and clothing. And that, listen at this. And that thou hide not thyself from your own flesh. Praise God. Now, I'm not talking about crazy people. People who are mean and hate you and will not repent, will not turn. And if they get close enough to you, they're going to hurt you. You know, just, just whatever. You know, that? No, no. But when you know that you have relatives who are suffering and you can do something about it, you can say, don't hide from your own flesh. Praise God. You, that you can do something about it. And they're not people who are just lazy and don't even want to do anything to help themselves. Right? It's not talking about those kind of people. Pe but but you, try, you try to encourage them and, and, and set them on the right path even. You try to give them a, a break. Give them a chance. Some people can't appreciate that and, and won't do anything with, with blessings when they come their way but squander them. You know, this is, I, hate, I hate to say it. And, and feel like people are, like they're entitled, like people owe them something. That's, no, no, you don't. No, no you owe nobody nothing. But we are to do this. We, we don't look at, at the plight of our own loved ones and family members who need assistance or who need help. And when we do that, when we do these things that we just read in the scripture here, the Bible says, from the mouth of God, from the word of God, then... Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Praise God. By your giving to others, clothing, helping, feeding, uh, uh, providing shelter for, for, the, for others, giving to the poor, then your light shall break forth as the morning. Your health, praise God. You, you want, you, man, God's word is powerful. This is so powerful. And your health, this will touch you in your spirit. This will touch you in your body, your health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness not just how good you are and how holy you know self righteous you are. it's not talking about that your ability to in continued giving your righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward your real guard God's got your back God's got you covered you know, do it God's way and he's got you, man. The, your, your, your giving this will be, God will lead you, and, and he'll show you how to give and, and where to give. Pray over and have, have a mindset, a heart to give, and it, it will it'll go before you because you're doing it with the right attitude, the right heart. You're doing it for the glory of God. You, you, you're doing it to be a blessing to mankind. That's what you want to do, to help somebody, and God has your back. And then when you go through, when you do it all, like God says, then shall you call. So you call and the Lord shall answer. Didn't the Bible say that? That Jesus talked about giving and, 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 and sowing and giving. How, and God cares much more about us than, than he does the birds and all and how he, he, he's, he's taking care of, of humankind. He will provide for us. And, but he wants us to ask, seek ye first the king. But God knows what things we have need of before we ask him. It comes right back to this. But he wants us to, to live and have an honest and good heart, do things God's way. It says, then you call and the Lord shall answer you. Thou shalt cry. And he, he shall say, here I am. 
Here I am. When you cry out for the Lord, he'll be right there for you. God will respond to you. And if you take away, if you do this, please listen. If take away from the midst of thee the yoke, keeping other people bogged down in bondage, in, in oppression, in sadness, making and some people love to see other people happy. Misery loves company. They're miserable too, city. They want to see other people unhappy. So if you take away from you the yoke and what? From the mystery, the yoke and the putting forth of the finger, always accusing people of stuff, always sl slandering backbiters, go gossipers, and, and speaking vanity. If you put all this stuff away, and well, that's, that's in the book, that's in the New Testament, Old Testament too. Even in the Old Testament, it says that there's, there should not be a, a tailbearer that goes up and down amongst the people. You, you don't want that. Something just involved in, in slander and lies and gossip, backbite, always wanting to defame somebody or destroy somebody's character. Just always. Just, man, say, put, put that stuff away. Stop judging. Stop putting forth the finger. Stop accusing people. You know why people do that? You know, because they're so guilty. They're mean. They keep, <laughs> and, and as long as they can, they can put other people down, it makes other folks Look, uh, look up to them like they sit so high on the pedestal of righteousness. No, they don't. No, they don't. That's ungodly. That's wicked. So God says to put it aside. Put it aside. And then, listen, if you draw out thy soul to the hungry from your heart of hearts, you, you, pour, you pour into the lives of others and, and satisfy the afflicted soul then, once you do this, shall thy light rise in obscurity. In dark times, the light of God, your light will rise in, in darkness. And your darkness, when things even appear to be bad with you, it'll be like noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. God will praise his holy name. And satisfy thy soul in drought. The people are going through periods and times of leanness. Man, you, 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 won't, you won't see it. It won't come near you. It won't bother you because God's got your back. He's got you covered. He'll satisfy your soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. Praise God Almighty. And like a spring of water, you'll be refreshing to others and your life will be refreshed whose waters fail not. That is so beautiful. This is the blessing of God. And it all starts with you pouring out of yourself, with, with your giving to yourself to help others. And, and this should, should be a, sincerely, sincerely prayed in, in the heart, life, or lived, or, or thought of, something in the life of every believer. That we do. Praise God. We want to bless his name. We want to bless the holy name of God, our Father. Praise God. Thank him for his goodness. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise God because he is God. He's worthy. We can't praise him enough. So we want to be, we want to bless his name and be a blessing to others. And when that's in your heart, we want to be a blessing from God to others. When that's in your heart, the Lord God himself will, he'll take care of everything about you. Oh, yes, he will. And now you don't do it like you're going to work. You're going to go and, 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 and say, punch a clock. Well, I'm doing my good deeds today so I can, so I can get a, a paycheck from the Lord. It's not about that. But you, you most definitely can't expect God to do what he said. God is faithful. His faithfulness is every morning, every day is new. His compassions are so great. You can trust him. You can, he'll do what he said. He will give. Give and it shall be given. Now, yes, he, he will. It, it'll happen. He says, shall men give into your bosom. God will fix it. He'll arrange it. And he will take care of you. He'll do what he said here. But it's, see, what we do, these righteous acts just can't be methodical the motions that we go through, you know? Not just stuff we do so we can get, no, it's got to be from the heart. It's got to be for real with us. And it's got to come from the heart of God, from the mind of Christ that's in us. And when we live like that and, and, we, and we function in and God's spirit through his word and his spirit, praise God, God definitely would do what he said he, he would do. So we're gonna, we're gonna I got, we have to do, we, we, we're gonna stand here for just a minute. So let, let's go here to Leviticus quickly. The book of Old, Old Testament. The Old Testament, further back in the Old Testament. The book of Leviticus. 
and let's check something out here. All right. Leviticus about the 19th chapter. Let's see. Just we're, we're, we're getting to it. Praise God. Leviticus 19. And let's see here. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. I might as well read this one while, while we're here. Now, now, you don't want to mistreat people. And that's a scripture in the Bible. We might get it. We might read it. Well, you, you don't ridicule a person because they're poor. There's nothing funny about that. You know, you don't make fun of people. You, like We already talked about that. You know, it's, uh, rejoice not when your enemy falls. You don't... You, you don't rejoice over a person's misfortune, or hurt, pain, suffering in any shape, form, or fashion. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's, it's, it's not comical. It's nothing to be laughed about or, or toyed with. You don't, you don't laugh at, at, at the pains of other people and the hurt of other people. That's, that's wrong. So the, the book tells us this, and we're gonna, I have to read this one while we're at it. In, in Leviticus 19th, the 19th chapter, Starting with the, uh, well, let's just read the 14th verse. You can read this all. All, all this is good. All, all this is good. I, we, we, we can read a few of them here. Well, let's, let's read the ninth verse. I'm just, we're just going to read. Listen. And, and when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of your field. Neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of your harvest. Thou shalt not glean thy vineyard. Don't just go through when you, even in harvest time, and try to get every little ear of corn, every little uh, grain or bean or what, whatever it is you've sown. But you, you, thou shalt leave them for the poor. See, God's always been concerned about the poor, no matter what. Leave them for the poor and the stranger, those who are not even a part of you. You might not even know them. Those who, who might, in this case, they, they, weren't, they weren't Hebrew. They weren't Israelites. They, they were Gentiles. They, they was, he called them strangers. He said, I am the Lord. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. That's New Testament to all of this. this. This shows us the character of God, shows us what God wants from us. Now, then it, then it says, uh, you shall not swear by my name falsely. Now, these days, no swearing at all. Jesus taught that. He said, thou shalt... Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. You shall not lie, trick, con, deceive anybody. And don't we know, we've got them in, in churches and everywhere these days. Neither rob the wages of him that is hired. Don't have somebody to do a job, and then you refuse to pay him. And, and, and when payday comes, well, you're supposed to pay him day by day? Well, you don't, you don't keep his money until the next day. Pay him. Give it to them. What, what, the book says that. Why, why do you want to hold somebody's hire the money away from them? They need to have people have families to take care of. People aren't working just because it's a hobby. You know, they're they're, they're wanting to earn their way. So pay what what you agree to pay, whether it's the, on every day or Friday. What, whatever you pay them, I don't know. Once a week, it once every two weeks. But d don't don't withhold their wages. I, that's cruel. And then it says, 14 verse. Thou shalt not curse the death. See, people think that's funny. To make fun of somebody's, if, 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 they, if they're challenged some way or another, you know? To make fun, they'll, they'll talk about them behind the back or, or yell or scream or, or say stuff or curse them out. See, God's against that kind, of, that kind of foolishness. He's against that. God hates that. Thou shalt not curse the deaf nor put a stumbling block before the, the blind, put something in the way of someone who doesn't have sight to, to, to throw them off or to make them stumble and fall. But you shall fear God. But shall fear thy God, I am the Lord. And it goes on and on and on. And, and it says this, and I'm going to get on down here because this, this works into what we're talking about here. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. And honor the face of the old man, old woman, and fear thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt rise up before the 
people who've lived a long time, and especially the good people and God-fearing, God-loving people. But before the, the whore hit, those people have a start, they have a life, they've lived a life. And if they, if they have a good heart, they could let you, give you some lessons in life, tell you some things that could, uh, to, could help you. They could impart some wisdom. But people are cursing out, disrespecting elders. I remember a time, man, no way in the world. No, well, you would talk back to an old person. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, uh, yes, ma'am, a uh, 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 yes, sir, uh, no, ma'am, a uh, no, sir, whatever. You, you, didn't, you didn't do that. You, you didn't butt in. Happen. Some of y'all remember when, when grown folks were talking, you tried to butt in, you might have felt the butt in of somebody's the fist or something. But you, and you started talking. Because you, no, you, you were supposed to excuse, something was important, excuse me. Mama, excuse me, Dad, uh, sir, or ma'am, or whatever, you know. But, but you just, you didn't disrespect people. And, but cursing people out and grown people, kids, kids, man, with no respect. But this is showing right here respect. I don't care if that hoary head, hoary, that means the gray headed person, people with gray hair. Don't mean the people, I don't care if that, that, that the head is that gray, bronze, orange, talon, or, uh, yellow. A purple, whatever. If elderly people show them some respect, give them some leeway, show them some, some honor, and listen, and honor the face of the old man, I am the Lord. Now, the Proverbs, we, we're getting to it. Praise God. Stay with me. Stay with me here. Proverbs, let's see, about the 16th chapter. We're going to come back in. In the Proverbs, Proverbs 16, and let's see what we have. Proverbs 16 and 30, okay, it is, 31, okay. Let's just read this. We're going to keep moving. The hoary head is a crown of glory. Listen, a crown of glory, a blessing from God. If... Listen, I'm glad this is on here. If it be found in the way of righteousness, if they're good, God-fearing or decent people, just, just good people, not, not just somebody who's not known for, the, like, uh, I'm not talking about dressing up and giving honor and respect to, to, to uh, uh, child molesters and all. Not, I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. No, no. I've, I've been over backwards for folks to, uh, no, but, but just, God is telling us, decent, just show decency. Some sense of respect to people who've lived a while. They've been on this earth. They've seen their challenges, and they and in the the the, the golden years, in the in the 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 twilight, the evening of, of their lives, man, they ought to enjoy some some life, some sense of decency. You don't want to make life hard on them or, or bad for them. The the hoary head is a crown of glory, and praise God, maybe just maybe, if you do that, maybe you'll live to see a good long life. There's scripture in the Bible for it. We, we, we're going to get it. We're going to have to read it. Listen. All right. Proverbs uh, 13. Uh, now, I want to make sure you get this now before we go any further. Proverbs 13. Mm, let's see here. Proverbs 13. Let's see. All right. I'm going to read two of them here. All right. Proverbs 13, and let's go here to the, the 13th verse. All right, let's see here. All right. We're going we're gonna to keep moving. We have to keep it moving, all right? And, and definitely, we're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it real from God's word. All right? Let's, let's just stay right with God's word. So very important. God has shown us in the book. You have to be thankful, appreciate him. His faithfulness is. His compassions are new every single day. Showed us how to treat others and, and, and how to be a blessing to mankind. What God expects. God cares a, a, about people who are disadvantaged. People say that God loves people. He loves mankind. So, <clears throat> now, the word of God, the message of God is coming through. So the Bible tells us here, Proverbs 13, 13, Whoso, doesn't matter who it is, but whoso despises the word shall be destroyed eventually, no matter what. You won't get around it. It will happen. But he that fears the commandment shall be rewarded. God will bless those 
It doesn't mean, oh, I'm scared of God. No, it means that you have a, 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 a reverence for God. You have a reverence and, and a trust for God's word. You fear not to obey God. You, you fear uh, not to do that, which is godly and right in the sight of the Lord. Okay? He that fears the commandment shall be rewarded. And in the 18th verse, it says, poverty, listen, do you want to uh, make sure that, 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 you, that you continually live in, in want, in lack, in, in a strain? You want to make sure? Okay. Reject God's word. Con hear it and reject it. Reject the wisdom of God. And you will say, well, it'll never happen to me. You can, I, don't do it. I'll just say, don't do it. Don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Listen, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. That's a fact. That's, that's, that's the truth right there from this book. But he that regards reproof shall be honored. You, some people can't take reproof. Some people hate to be corrected, okay? Some people can't stand it. Some people can't stand, even be told the, the, to be sort of helped or escorted in or through the way of righteousness. They can't, they, they can't stand it because they're stubborn and, and proud and they, they hate for anybody. And some folks say, I don't care what nobody say. And when they say that, you better believe they're talking about God too. Because they don't care what God says about loving, forgiving, and, and living life or giving and helping one another. They don't care about that. They care nothing about God, no matter, and, and they'll go to church. Uh, they'll talk about the Lord, how good the Lord is. Oh, well, let, let, me, let me keep moving. We've got to keep moving because we have to get this in. Now, in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, and then we're going to go right over. I'm try to try to get this. Everybody knows this. This book, the, the, what we call the Bible, contains the Word of God, all right? The words of God, it contains uh, insight to the character of God. It contains message from God, a message from God to humanity. It shows believers what God wants from us, what he expects from us and for us, what he has for, it, it, it gives us so much. So, and, and so we find this character, this character of this wonderful holy God throughout this entire Bible. And, and God wants us to live in it. If we live in the spirit, let's walk in the spirit of his word. So in Exodus, and, and you, some of y'all can just rattle these right off. We're not going to read them all, but uh, we're going to go to the 20th chapter of Exodus very quickly here. Because we've got a little more, little more to cover. I want, you, I want you to get Exodus, the 20th chapter. I'm not going to read all these. The commandments, what they call the, the Ten Commandments. But there's one in particular that we're looking at today. Now, God, and I have to show I have, I have to show you this to you today. God's a father, and, and he said himself, if I'm a father, where's my honor? You know, people don't even know what honor is. Honor means to value worth, what the, the worth, the value that you show that you have for something or someone, and, and that you participate in, and in, 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 so far as God goes, everything that we have to offer is God's. We show God honor and respect by doing what he says with, with, with our money and everything. You know? we, we, we show, we, we honor his name, we bless his name, just to show at, his value, his worth, whether it's in giving, tithing, whatever, the, the, the value we place on God, the, the worth we have on God. And, and uh, praise God, he's worth more than we can ever give, uh, we can ever, ever imagine. Thank God. And it's just, it just never ceases to amaze me how that this holy God who created everything, who owns everything, who owns everything, who's so, so great even the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. He thought on us. He thought about us. He planned for us before the foundation of the world. Praise God. He, he took care of us, made provision for us before this world was ever formed. He's God. He formed all creation. He created the angels. He, and, and, and it was 
awful when one of them sought rebellion, Lucifer, son of had, had authority, power, gifted, gifted from God, created everything he had came from God. The abilities, the talents, the wisdom, the instruction he had came from God. God, he said that the way, when he created him, all his workmanship was, was, it was formed in him, created in him from the day that, that God made him. And he rebelled, that wasn't enough. He rebelled against God. He dishonored God. He led rebellion against the almighty God. Praise God. Can you imagine that? God is, is, is keen on honor, folks. Okay? God is, he is, he is very, very keen on that. You got, you got, he, he, he watches that. And you find that sometimes, and we don't, sometimes you don't know who or what, but sometimes people are. Sometimes they're just going through a bad time in life, but, but sometimes people are going through a bad time because they, somebody that, that deserved honor, given honor from God, you know, because of God, or should have been given because God said it, they dishonored someone that God had chosen for honor. That, that will come back, that, that, that right there, that, that chicken will come back to roost in your, in, in your backyard, in your home, in your life. And sometimes people are going through things because they have rebelled against God. God deserves honor, and he's keen on that. He, he created the heavens and the earth. He created the angels and never them to rebel. Hallelujah. And then we find that God, in his infinite wisdom, praise God, David talked about it. I think we talked a little bit about it the other week, how, how David just, he was just, he, he was awestruck by it. I'm, I'm marvelously, wonderfully made. I, praise God. So I, I, I can't. I just can't get over how great you are and, and the way you, you've put this body together, you know? It's even before I was born, you knew me, you know? A few, a few people will say that prophets spoke of that. Before I was ever born, you planned for me. You knew my, 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 the members of my body before they were ever formed in the womb. This is God. So we look at that. And then when we consider that everybody on this planet whether we know them or not, or whatever, whether we met them or not, or whatever, we all have a. But most most people know them. Most, most not not all, you know. Sadly, so it just happens. Life life happens like that. But God wanted you here. God wanted me here. He wanted us here, and He'd already chosen the avenue in which He was going to use, which He saw fit to get us here on planet Earth, and for a person to have especially a godly mother or father, a decent mother or father, and to turn, and God used them to get you here, to rebel or use them to, to inject themselves into your life as a mother or father, to, to be a blessing to you, to, to help you, to rear you in this life, through and, and shelter you, protect you in life, to, to raise you up in life, to, to point you as well as they could, to Jesus Christ, man, to rebel against that, to dishonor that is a crime and a sin. That's a sin. So he said here, even in the Old Testament, Exodus 20, and uh, the 12th verse, honor thy father and thy mother, and that, well, that, that days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God gives you. Not just rise up before the whore here. Not just saying, yes, sir, yes, man. That's, that's, that's good. That's, that's respect. That's showing respect. But respect should, should, should grow and come forth out of honor. That's, that's the way that is. To have value, to value your parents, man. To value them. To, 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 do you know how... how uh, Appraisers go around, and they, they take a look at a property or whatever, and, and, and they make an assessment. They make a county assessors, the assessor's office. They, they, they assess what they determine is the value of a certain property. You know, Appraisers go around, and they, they, they lay a, 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 a money, a dollar amount, on the, the worth of a property. Well, we, people need to make an assessment on the blessings that God has put in their life, the value of their parents 
the, the, the avenue, the person, the persons that God used to get them here. They need to place a value, and, and it's uh, one like no other, to have been born in, into this life by the grace of God, no matter who, what, what. You, you need to, and you have a, a good mother, good father, to not honor them, that is disgusting. That means to see, to, to place value on their lives, to, to make sure they're, they're, that they're fine, that they're okay, that they have no wants, and you'll do nothing to hurt them. You don't want to do that. That's ungodly. Now, it's, it's repeated. I have to go right back o- over here. Let's see. In, in, in uh, Ephesians, very quickly, the book of Ephesians, stay, stay with me. Gotta, we're going to, at these past few, these last few in a minute, we're going to sort of read through, but I have to read you Ephesians because it's, it's just a repeat of Exodus. Ephesians, and let's go here to the sixth chapter. All right. All right. Praise God. Praise the Lord God. God's good. God is good. And I, and I, hope, you, I hope you're not rejecting this. I hope you're hearing God's word. It, the, the Bible tells us, it talks about families. It talks about the, the, the responsibilities and the attitudes that fathers and, uh, should have, husbands should have, to, to the wives, wives to husbands, and, and so on. And, and, and then it says in the sixth chapter, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why? Well, this is right. <laughs> obey it because God said do it. That's why. And so he said that's the right thing to do. It's right to obey them, to honor them, to honor them, to obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and mother. See to their well-being. Make sure that they're okay. Make sure that they're not suffering. Or they don't have any lack. That they're not doing without. Make sure Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. And that promise is that it may be well with thee. Now, please don't ever forget this, because this is true whether you believe it or not. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on earth. That you may live a long life, a long, that it may be well that you have a good life. So if you don't do this, and it sure, as sure as, as you, you're listening to me, as sure as, as God put this here, this is going to happen. If you dishonor your parents, and, and they love you, do the best they can. And I'm not saying everybody's perfect. But they, not, not, now this is not talking about you got to go make sure that, that your molester or, or, or whatever, your rapist is, is, is taken care of. I'm not saying that. I'm, ta- I'm not saying that at all. So don't, please don't misunderstand me. Okay, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you've got parents who've done the best they could do, the best they could, the best they knew how to do, and did what they could for you, raised you, did what they could to protect and keep you, shelter you, and made sacrifices for you, and I say for me too. Then the, the Bible says that this is the first commandment with promise, and then is, if you do this, it'll be well with you and you'll live long on the earth. But if you don't, it's going to be hell with you. It's going to be hell. And your life will be cut short or full of misery. It's sickness. I mean, people get people say, well, people get sick every day. Okay, go say, say all that. Go, go ahead. Be, be a smart aleck. Go, go right ahead. That, that's your business. This will come to roost. And you'll know why. You might, not, might be too proud to admit it are too proud to turn from it. That's why I, I, I'm telling you, see, God's mercies are, are new every day. So, and to all the living, there's hope. So I'm hoping that this is your time, this is your chance. If you haven't been following this, you got a chance. You're still here. You have a chance to embark on this beautiful journey right here, to, 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 to accept this, to take this in as a part of your life and who you are. To honor them means that you value them. You, you, you can't value something without, without uh, you know, uh, well, people talk about it all the time. You got a piece of property sitting somewhere, and, and what is it? It, most, it appreciates in value. 
So that's what you want to do. You want to show appreciation to your parents, the way you, the way you value them. You know, not just saying yes or yes, ma'am, and you, you never see their comfort, never see the well-being, never even ask them how they're doing. Do you need them? What can I do? I just drop something on them. You know what I mean? Just, just, man, th this is so very important. So, so near and dear to your life. And in some cases, this is a life and or death situation. And you don't want to be, don't be slothful. You know, I know even concerning forgiveness of sins, uh, uh, having attitudes toward each other, the, the Bible tells us to let not the sun go down on our wrath. That means you don't even go to bed. You would dare go to bed with something in your heart against a brother or sister. You, you, you dare to, uh, or husbands and wives have arguments and want to turn over and trust to go, close the eyes and go to sleep. To go to sleep with that lingering between them that in, in the air without getting settled, you know, Get, getting things out of the way and, and loving each other and saying, honey, I'm sorry, whatever, that let alone a child to their mother or father, to you go to sleep feeling all right about the evil that you might have done to a parent. Are you, a, a, a worse still, maybe you don't go to sleep, but maybe they do. You, maybe they, you, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they go to sleep without you ever ha having a chance to make it right with them. You don't want to be caught like that. God, have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, Jesus. You want to, I'm telling you, you, if you're still alive, you, you need to do what's, what's right today. If, if, if your parents still, they do what's right, man. Embrace them. Embrace them. And, and, and don't, be, don't, be, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. You know, embrace them. Sw get rid of that pride. Get that mess. I, want, I hate to say just swallow your pride. That means it's still in you. Puke that stuff up. That's, that's, that's making your whole life sick anyway. Get rid of that pride. Get it out. Get rid of it and, and love God enough to love other people. You know, people always talk about how, how much they love God, but they don't love each other. You, you, you're a liar. The Bible says that. You're just a liar. You're telling a lie. You don't love God. You don't even know him. It, 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 so what this book tells me, you don't know him. So this, the first commandment with promise is that you honor your father and mother. So, and then your days will be long. Now that is a blessing. Because in olden times, see, God didn't tolerate some of this stuff. Man, sh oh, I, I know some of y'all right now. <laughs> you didn't even talking back. Girl, you, you would dare because you knew what would happen. You knew what would happen. That's why some of you probably had, probably told some of your friends lies. You went out on on the on the ball field on the, the the playground one day with your head all knotted up and and and, and walking funny had, had a limp and, and walking funny and all banged up and they say what happened oh man I fell off my bike no no you, you, you let your mouth get you in trouble and your your mama your daddy took care of it right quick you know you didn't talk you didn't smart off back to people you you didn't smart off to talk back to elderly people grown people no that was not tolerated. But it, it, do, let's go to Deuteronomy. I'm going to read this right quick. We're, we're going to move on. We're, we're going to move on. Because got got a few I just want to point out to you. And I'll let you study it, okay, here in, in, in a little bit. But in Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, this is the way this stuff used to be handled. Deuteronomy 21. Okay. Oh, boy, this is rough right here. Now, now, let me tell you, now, God is not asking for this today. But I, I want to show you the way God feels about rebellion, about stubbornness, uh, about stupidity like that. To, to raise up, you got grandkids cussing the, the parent, not just their parents, you know, but sometimes, and their parents will allow them to cuss out their, their parents. You know what I mean? To get smart, to talk back to them, to, to sass them. That's crazy. That's evil, it's nasty, it's ungodly. God cares nothing. For, it's not cute. It's not cute at all. Your life will come to nothing but a heap of ashes. Listen today, please. I'm telling you, God means that. You want to honor, honor, and that it may be well with you and you live long on earth. That's what you want to do. Praise God. What are you going to want what, as you progress, if you live? See, that's why some people don't want to have children because they know how they are. You know, they know how they were. They, they know the attitudes they, they had to their uh, grandparents or parents or whatever. 
Now, the book says this. This, this is what used to, the way they used to handle it in, in, in the olden time, but don't do it now. You cannot. God forbid. God doesn't want you to literally do this now, but this is the way they handle uh, that kind of like back talk and sassiness and all that kind of stuff. If a man, Deuteronomy 8, uh, Deuteronomy 21, 21st chapter, 18 verse, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey the force of the voice of his father or mother, and that when they have chastened him, they've, they've tried to discipline him, they've tried to deal with him, they've tried to teach him, but he will not hearken to them. They, they, they've, done, they've done the best they could with this individual. Then shall his father and his mother, they, they had to lay hold on him, they lay hold on him, bring him out to the elders of his city and to the gate of his place, and they shall say unto the elders of his city, this, our, our son is stubborn. He is so stubborn. He, he won't obey us. He won't do anything. And he's rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. He just wants to hang around so we can take care of him. You know, that's all. He, he's just waiting on us to die. To, you know what I mean? Just, it, it, there are people like that in folks' lives. I hate to say it, but that's true. It's, it's just true. So when that happened, they said, see, they had to drag him out, drag him out of the house, bring him to the elders, and then all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died. Now, and God approved that. Isn't that something? Now, please, this, this, does, this shows you the character of God, how he hates that kind of stuff. That's what he's trying to show us today. Don't do that. That's wrong. You, you go to jail. You, you, man, you'll get tried for murder. Don't do that, okay? All right, but it's, it said, all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he died. So shall you put away evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. So that'll, that'll cut that out. I guarantee you, you won't have nobody on the same block carrying on like that. <laughs> once, once they see the way, it's empty, but God doesn't allow that. But I just want you to see the way, the, the attitude of God to God hates that. And for you to, to a stubborn, rebellious, back talking, and kids think it's cute. And, so, and some parents, some parents encourage their kids to be grown, to be little, little grown demons. I hate to say it, just, just, just grown. Encourage them to be nasty to elderly people. Encourage them to be nasty to their grandparents. Let something happen to them. And everybody wants to cry and, and oh boy, and I loved them so much. Now, come on now. Come on, well, praise God. I, I, gotta, I have to do this today. Now, Leviticus uh, 19. Uh, we, already, we already talked about that, about not gleaning your vineyard. See, see, God cares for the poor. Now, and in looking back at what we've talked about already, if God feels that way about the poor, it feels that way about the fatherless, the stranger, uh, those who aren't even attached to him, those who don't claim to be saved. Uh, uh, back in, in the day, uh, uh, Gentiles, uh, when he was the God of the Jews only. If God feels that way about taking care of the poor, how should people feel uh, about their parents? How does he feel ab about people taking care of them, their folks, their parents, making sure they have no, no one, making sure that they, they show them honor and respect I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this. I, I have to read it. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy the 20, 27. I'm going to read a couple right quick. We're, we're going to sort of bounce through this. All right? Deuteronomy, just to read you a few. You can write them down and, and go back and, and study them. Deuteronomy 27 and 16. Okay? All right. Cursed be he that sets light, listen, set it light by his father or mother, and all the people shall say amen. And you can't say make light of his father or mother or to, to ridicule them or to make fun of them or to just, just despise them. And ignore them. And so we, we're gonna we gotta talk about this. This is gonna just you read read the rest of this. A whole lot of lessons in this book. So we're just gonna read. Let's go to Proverbs, Book of Wisdom. Let's go back to Proverbs. We've been there 
a couple of times before in, in this message, but we're going we're gonna to go on. Now, if God cares so much of, about the poor and, and living and loving and, and helping other people, man, what God is really concerned about is honor and respect and the way you treat others, the way you treat your parents. Let's see. Let's go to Proverbs very quickly. We're going to just read through, through here. Let's go to Proverbs, the 19th chapter, I think. Okay. All right. All right. Proverbs 19. Well, we read that. And uh, in 17, then we'll go to 26. I'm going to read that again. He that has, that has pity upon the poor lends to the Lord, and that which he has given will he repay him. And the Bible tells there's fathers and, and mothers, parents, chasten your son while there is hope, while he's young. Teach them. Yeah, you need to put a little switch on the button sometimes. Okay, fine. Uh, deprive them. Teach them how to, how to live while, while they're young and let not your soul spare for his crying. Now, in the, uh, down in the 26th verse, it says, he that wastes his father. Listen at this. Wastes his, he, he brings his father to ruin. Calls his father grief. He, that, he or she, doesn't matter, about the gender, he that wastes his father and chases away his mother, listen, is a son or daughter, I'll say our daughter, that causes shame and brings reproach. You know what that means? Brings a person to disgrace. A person that, that, that wastes their father, or wastes their mother, chases away their mother. That means make, make being around that child unbearable. They run them off. Uh, they run them off. That, that is a child. Listen, that, that, that's a shame. He is a son that causes shame and brings reproach. And you think God is not going to check in on, on this stuff? Honor your father. Honor your mother. You better honor your parents. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And you better see them for who they are. That God used them to get you here. Now, the, the 20th chapter, quickly, let's, let's just read while we're in here. The 20th chapter, 20th verse. All right, well, there's, here's one, 19th verse. We just got through talking about tailbearers. <laughs> he that goes about as a tailbearer, a liar, a slanderer, a gossiper, reveals secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. And they do. Whoso, in the 20th verse, doesn't matter. Who, who it is, whoso curses his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in darkness. His light, the light of his life is going to be put out. He's going to live in darkness. His, his life is going to come to ruins. That, that's the book. This, this is God's word. Let's, let's just keep going. 20, let's go to 23 right quick. Okay, 23 and 22. You read all these later on. Check them out. 20. 23, 22, let's see here. Oh, boy. This is, this is good. All right, 19th verse. 19th verse. Hear thou, my son and daughter, and be wise. Guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine bibblers. People just live to party or live for the prestige. You know, people want to be a part of the glamour, elite stuff. Forget that. Forget that. People just silly. Human beings are some of the silliest Creatures, and they need to grow up. It's grown men trying to be kids and teen, everybody's worried about being cool. That's just stupid. You know, it's, it, but anyway, be not among wine bibblers. Uh, it didn't say don't, don't drink wine. It didn't say that. Or uh, among riders, eaters of the flesh. They live just to satisfy their own appetites. Why? For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto thy father, that begot thee. Hallelujah. Listen, learn, and despise not thy mother when she's old. That's what, you know what, and, and it's sad to see that, see, when, 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 when some of these parents are, are young and, and, and strong and vibrant, they try to, especially those who try to raise their families right, man, children would dare to do certain things because their parents are going to tolerate it. So they wait till they get old, some of them, you know, and mistreat them. While claiming they love them and or love the Lord, which they're lying about both. You know, it's, it's just a lie. It's not true. You know, 
But listen, listen to this. Despise not thy mother when she is old. That's saying a lot. You think about it now. Read it. Look into it. You study that. This is, this is from the word of God. This is wisdom. God's trying to give you some wisdom. Praise God. You ought to, man, the older a, 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 a person gets in life, the more, the more comfortable their life should be. The, the, the more closeness they ought to have with their families. The kids are... I'll, I'll sort of gravitate toward them in one way or the other to, to help them and, and to appreciate the, the, the life that, that, that mom and dad or mom or dad tried to give them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's, let's just keep reading Proverbs 28. <laughs> stand, with, stand with the word. I'm not going to read all of these. And, there's so many. So we're going to let some go. Proverbs 28 and... 24, all right. All right. All right. Oh, well, let's read 23. He that rebukes a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flatters with his tongue. A, a, a person who, who suffers like a, a, a sharp correction, set matters right, right with a man. If they're willing to hear it, They'll appreciate it, especially in the long run, because it'll play out, it'll work well for people. Though there's another script in the same book, the book of Proverbs, that if you rebuke a scorner, you're going to get yourself a block. You made yourself a lifelong enemy, you know. And, and some people, I might be getting one now. I don't know. Might be making an enemy now. So I might be getting myself a block. I don't know. So be it. This is this is God's God's word right here. All right, Proverbs. Uh, what we got? Twenty-eight, twenty-four. Uh, all right, now whoso robs his father or mother and says it's no transgression, they steal from them, they take from them, they manipulate them, they use them financially, the same is the companion of a destroyer. They are, are walking hand in hand with a destroyer. Well, last I heard there are a couple of things known about Lucifer, it, 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 that, that is for, what, one, full pride, pride causes his downfall, causes to be cast out cast out of heaven for, for one, and then he's the father of a liar. He, he's, he's, he's a liar. All those who belong to him are liars. He's the father of a liar. And then he's called the thief, and the thief comes not but to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So you, the person who, who robs father and mother, and they feel like it's all right. They steal from them. They manipulate them. They take their goods. They take anything they, they get, no matter what, what they live for, no matter what. And think it's all right? That that is all right? That person is walking hand in hand with Satan. They're a companion. Listen, it says, I'll read it again. You, you look at it. Whoso robs his father or mother and says it is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. Praise God. That's just, it's God's word, I believe. And Proverbs is full of this. Just what it says. Proverbs. Things that help us, tidbits of wisdom here and there, truths of, of, of God. Now Proverbs 30 and 11. Then we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna jump out of here in a minute. Praise God. Pro, Proverbs 4 and not 30. Let's go to 30. We we'll get 4 in a minute. In the 11th verse, we're not gonna read all of these. So we're living in a time like this. And don't misunderstand me. I know some, some of you all, you love your parents. You love your grandparents. You, you're respectful. You're mad at them. You teach your children the, the same. You know, you, you teach them to live a decent life and, and to reach for the highest that God has to offer in life and, and to serve God well. And, and, and to be, there, there are some who don't. That, that, you might as well just say it. Listen, there is a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. Hallelujah. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes. Everything they do, no matter how filthy, how nasty, how wicked, how evil it is, they're pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation. Does, does this sound familiar? Oh, how lofty. Are their eyelids, are their eyes rather, and their eyelids are lifted up full of pride. They're arrogant. There's a generation whose teeth 
are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy among men. There are those that exist. There's a generation. And that generation exists amongst us now. And I hope to God that none of you identify with it. And if you do, to all the living, there's hope. I hope today that God will give you repentance. I hope his goodness will lead you to repentance. Because without that, if you, if you don't see God's good, if you don't see his goodness in, in your life, that you, you'll, you'll fight this. You'll fight this entire message and deny it and say it's not me. Very quick, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to talk about it. Let's, let's go to Proverbs, the, the fourth chapter. It tells us something. This, this it, right here is to help somebody else. Help, help us all. Actually, there's always something in every message to help everybody, one way or the other. Let's see, Proverbs 4, starting with 13th verse. 10th verse. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. 10th verse, right here. And the years of your life shall be many. This is wisdom talking. A father talking to his, giving wisdom to his, his children, to his son. And the years, say, you hear, receive my sayings, follow my advice, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you go, Thy steps shall not be straightened. You won't be hindered or hampered. When you, when you run, you shall not stumble. If you follow the advice from the word of God, take fast hold of instruction and let, and listen, and let her not go. Keep her, for she is your life. Instruction is your life. Do this, please. Or don't do what, what, what it tells you not to do. Enter not into the path of the wicked. People that you know are living lives contrary to, to godliness, to what, living evil lives, wicked lives, slinging, robbing, stealing, killing, whatever it is, disrespecting the elders, not honoring their own parents, and they encourage you to do the same. If, if somebody goes along with you, if you go along with somebody like that, you, I, I don't know what to say about you. I remember once I had what, what I, I thought was a friend. I, you know, it's funny how you can be friends to people, and uh, they're, never, they're never really your friend. They never really show you, you know, friendship, not any true friendship. They, they don't, but they'll receive everything you can give to them. That's, but that with, with a few folks, and I'm sure that some of you have too. Now, in, in this guy, I remember what that helping get some people set up and, and some stuff they wanted to do, some, some of their dreams. And, oh, well, we're going to take care of you with this. Man, you think I ever heard from those folks? Not even a, a genuine thank you. you know? so, so all that stuff comes back to, to people. And then there was a, another person who uh, years ago, that we were uh, single, and, and we stayed in the same little, little, little tiny place, little, little, little apartment, all right? And one day, I hate to say what, what happened, but he, in a place that should have been about nothing but doing the right thing and, and holiness and, and especially being taught to do the right thing and loving God and taking care of family and all that. And, and this individual was bragging to me about how he had manipulated some things and he would quit this job and go work this to keep from paying, and he thought he was, that was awful, to keep from taking care of his children. I told him, you get out of my face. I mean, said, I, man, I mean, I have, I, have, I have children now, you know, but they're grown now. I wasn't there to try to shirk my response. That's crazy. That is crazy. That ended it. That, that, that friendship was gone. That, that was over. Because he, why? It didn't have to be, but he didn't, he didn't try to, to, to rectify that and make that right with his family and with his children and do the right thing to him. It just, and it went downhill from there. To, don't even condone wickedness. That's, that's what I'm saying. Don't go along with it. Enter not into the path of, of wicked men. Go, go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Don't hang out with them. Listen up. Look at what this is saying. Avoid it. 
pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away, for they sleep not. They won't even go to sleep at night, can't go to sleep at night, except they've done some mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the justice is the shining light. That's what a just person wants. They want to do that which is right and good in life. That shines more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They don't know what they're doing. They know not at what they stumble. They don't know why, why their lives won't get better. Why no matter what they do, their lives continually get worse and worse and worse. Because they live in opposition to God. They live in opposition to that that's good and right. So you don't want to just hang out. Not when you try to when you want to teach somebody, help somebody. It don't mean you have to run with them and stay. No, God forbid. God forbid. That, that's wrong. So we've gone over a few things. I'm, I'm going to let you read. Go to Saint. I tell you what you do. Go to read Saint, Saint Mark. Start, even in in religion, Jesus talked about people like that. People would get hooked up in the church, and and uh, even some of the the. The church officials, the uh, uh, synagogue officials and all, the teachers back in the day, the rabbis and all, they, they would allow those people, they would allow them to say, if you give so much to the, to the church or to the synagogue, they, they would count that, well, you don't have to take care of your parents. But bull. No, you just, I, I have to do it. They got to read it. We'll just read through it. Saint, Saint uh, we're going to close out here right after this. Saint Mark, the uh, seventh chapter. Okay. New Testament, the words of Jesus. It's, yeah, we'll get this one. Might as well do this one right here. God willing. I said God willing. We're going to close out right here, okay? Praise God. St. Mark. And don't you, don't you condone anything that's contrary to God's word. Nothing. No matter how small it might seem to be. Because you like somebody. You want to try to preserve some, a, friendship, a friendship of ungodliness ain't worth a quarter. Remember that. St. Mark, the seventh chapter. And the, mm, and the fifth verse, okay. All right. All right. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked and asked Jesus, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? But they eat bread with unwashing hands. You know, the Pharisees were so religious, they had a certain way when they went into the markets, they carried themselves a certain way, so pompous, so proud and arrogant and always above everybody else. Okay, wore the scriptures on, on their clothing and hats and all that stuff. And they had a certain way of washing their hands and washing their pots, handling the, the, the dishware and all, all that stuff when they returned from the market if they'd been out in public. Okay, so... Jesus' disciples, they just ate. They, they just ate when it was time. And Jesus answered, in the sixth verse, he answered and said unto them, Well did Isaiah prophesy, you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips. They talk about me, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain they do, listen, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. They worship me, but it's all in vain. They will take scripture and twist it and, and use it and manipulate it for their own purpose, for their own evil. They'll take scripture and, and use it and use it in such a way it allows them to still live an evil, hateful, unforgiving life <laughs> without consequence, without repentance. You know? So so he he, taught, he said, You're hypocrites. Yeah, so this, this, they, you, work, you worship me in vain. A lot of people are doing that today. Going to church every Sunday, they're just what we're used to before this COVID thing, you know. But, but useless. God's not paying that stuff any attention. And then he said, how be it in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, like the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said to them, full well, you reject the commandment of God so you can keep your own tradition. For Moses says, say, this is what the one they, they rejected specifically. And, and there are others. they got other traditions that they have uh, concerning certain days and what folks say are supposed to be holy days and all that. And God's got nothing to do with it. 
You know, got nothing to do with it. it well, they said, peace on earth, goodwill to me, and all that. Okay, we look for that one day when, when the Prince of Peace comes, when Jesus said in St. Matthew 10 that, that you think I'm, I'm come to send peace on earth? I tell you nay, said the Lord, but division. He said that. So what, what are people doing? Right? People are playing games, you know, playing religious games. And, and Jesus said, well, I'm going to give you a sign since you asked for one, but there won't be any sign given to this adulterous and wicked generation but one. That's, that's the sign of Jonah the prophet, like he was in the bell of the well for three days and three nights, 72 hours. So must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth, okay? So, but tradition has kicked out that truth. Tradition has called God a liar. He wasn't in there 72 hours. He, he, was, he, he was in, in the heart of the earth from Good Friday, they say, to early sunrise Sunday morning. See, this? oh, man, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. They reject the truths of God, so they go with their own traditions. And this is one right here in the days of Jesus that he walked on the earth that, that, they, that they did. He said, now, this, say, you reject God's commandment so you can keep your own tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother. And whoso curses his father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, if a man say to his father or mother, it's Corbin. That is, it's, it's a gift by whatever you might be profited by me. What, what, what I was going to give you was, was uh, designated for the church. I, I gave it to the synagogue. I gave it to the treasury and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm free from my obligation, my godly obligation to look after your well-being. And, and the, the synagogue uh, treasurers and all, they, they okayed it. They went along with it. They rejected God's truth for, for profit. That's, that's, and that's the way people are today, the same way. People reject the truths of God for their own, for their own self-serving selves, their own well-being. And it says here, that you, and then you, you allow them to do no more, so you release them from that obligation. See, that's not true. No matter what, we are obligated. Now, if we are obligated by Jesus, look at St. Matthew 6, to give alms, to give to the poor, written in Isaiah, to help the poor. If we are obligated like that, we are obligated to make sure that, you, you, to, that we honor our parents, one way or the other. That's just, that's just the way it is. And to, to offer any kind of excuse why you don't. Now, if they need to, to see somebody suffering, a parent, now you see people suffering on the street, you feel so sorry for them, oh God, I really, and, you, and you will put a parent in harm's way. Now, that's awful. Now, come on, let's, let's just be for real. That's just bad. To dishonor someone who needs your help, who gave you birth, is wrong. That's wrong. And, it's, and, and, that, and that's why he called, well, he called them hypocrites. And you got a lot of folks in church who, who will dishonor God even, dishonor his word so that they can do what they want to do and they, they, want to, they want to feel good about it, about not obeying God. So it says they, that they made the word of God of none effect on certain people. And, and God's word does not have effect on some people. And that's, to tell you the truth, that's by design. Jesus said that. He said he, God made that plain. He doesn't want everybody to hear. He said he, he, keeps, he let some people hear, speak some his people in parables. Say unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to others in parables. I don't want everybody to hear. So that hearing, they'll hear words, but they, they won't hear in their spirit. They, they'll, they'll, they'll see, but they, they won't understand. They won't really comprehend. Because if they do, I'll have to save them. They'll be converted. And I'll heal their souls. I'll heal them. He said, I didn't want that. But he said what people do and what the, this society of ours has done, this religious society of ours has done, has made the word of God of none effect through their, they, they foster hate, they okay hatred, discrimination, segregation, all, all that stuff. They don't mind in churches. The, the, average, the average hypocrite, demon, racist, uh, uh, narcissist, uh, what, a Nazi person, whoever, whoever it is, uh, so, so they go to church somewhere. Yeah, they go to church. <laughs> Praise God. Let, 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 we're going to go. So Making make the word of God of none effect through your tradition which you've delivered and many such like things you do. You can't play with God's word. It's going to come back to bite you. It'll come back to get you. So I thank, thank the Lord. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his word, for his truth. 
And if God cares so much, he cares that much about the poor and the way we should treat them and, and, and show them the, 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 the life of God in us, the, the compassion of God through us. What do you think we ought to be doing for our own folks? Just think about it. Just think about it. Praise God. Hope the message has, has been a blessing to you. God is, his, his mercy is good and new every single day. And today could be your day. See, to all the living, there's hope. But you must be willing to hear, to repent, to turn from your own way to the way of God. Praise God. I say goodbye, and I pray that the Lord will bless you until the next time. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.